ordered for the Polestar of War have finally begun, starting with the UK and Australia. With that, the pricing information for each package and the specific features of the car have been revealed. Other countries, including the US, will start taking orders and selling the Polestar 4 soon. In this video, we take a look at the Polestar 4 package configurations and pricing in the UK and Australia, and use them as a basis to estimate the pricing in the US market. We'll also take a look at some of the new vehicle information. Both the UK and Australia start with two basic specs, single rear wheel and your overall driver. Both come with a 100 kW battery as a standard. In the case of dual motor, the front and rear motors have the same power output. For the Polestar 2, until the 2023 model year, the front and rear motors had the same power output. From the 2024 model year, a motor with a higher power will be placed in the rear wheel, enhancing driving dynamics. However, the Polestar 4 has the same front and rear motors. Why? When compared to typical electric vehicles with battery capacities ranging from 80 to 90 kWh, and large size electric vehicles such as EV9 and EQS are around 100 kWh. Compared to them, the Polestar 4's 100 kWh battery is very competitive. First, the battery of Polestar 4 is CATL's NCM battery. However, Polestar confirms that SK ON's batteries will be used in Polestar 4's produced in Busan, South Korea since 2025. As a result, North American consumers will receive the Korean built Polestar 4 starting with the model year 2026. A total of six exterior colors are available. Only one magnesium color is available at no extra cost, while white and gold cost £1,400. The rest of the colors charge a £1,000. This applies to Australia as well. Let's choose white as the exterior color for now. Before selecting the interior, let's take a look at the upgrade packages. There are four packages in total. First, let's look at the components of the Plus package. The default audio is replaced with the Harman Kardon audio. The Polestar official webpage doesn't even give any specs for the default audio. Does that mean it's not very good? Harman and Kardon audio has a total 12 speakers and 1320 watts of power. A head-up display is included, featuring a snow mode that adjusts the display colors to yellow enhanced visibility on snow-covered lows with a white background. Illuminated lights are integrated behind the interior panels. The fixed LED lamps provide an intelligent active high beam function which automatically adjust the beam's angle according to the surrounding conditions. An electric tailgate with a foot sensor is included. As you may know, the Polestar 4 has no rear window, making it the first car in the industry to have a non-mirrored display in the rear view mirror. However, the side mirrors are one of the traditional mirror type with the addition of an auto dimming feature. The standard is a two zone air conditioner, but the plus package has three zones, so you get an additional touch screen that can be controlled from the back seat. The standard is a eight way power control for the driver's seat, but the plus package has four way level support adjustment, making it a 12 way power control and manual cushion extension are added. Additionally, a feature that adjusts the seat and steering wheel position for easier entry and exit. The rear seats now come with power reclining functionality and heated seats. While the standard model does not include heated steering but included in the plus package. I think this should have been included as a standard from the first place. Similarly, the air filter system to remove ultra-fine dust is only available on the PLUS package. Finally, it supports 22 kW mm. AC charging. It claims to take only 5.5 hours of fully charged from 0 to 100%. Let's take a look at the pilot package next. The contents mm. are simple. Pilot and lane change assist. At this point, 
It's uncertain how much smoother adaptive cruise control has become or how quickly it will react to a stationary vehicle ahead. But the response to interference during semi-autonomous driving has definitely improved. This is because there are now four more cameras, two on each side, that observe the view of the next lane. And additionally, a feature that I personally consider unnecessary automatically changing lanes with the just a turn signal manipulation is also included. I don't think it's much different than what I already experienced in Hyundai vehicles. Importantly, I didn't feel like this feature made me feel comfortable and safe changing lane quickly. Plus, it's nonsensical to assume that the only person who need this feature are the ones who have a license in the first place. Back to the build up process. In the UK, the plus package is the default. In Australia, the pilot package is the default. It's up to the Polestar entity in each country tailored to the respective market's need. Therefore, my prediction is that if one package becomes standard in the US market, it will be the pilot package. To fully leverage the advantage of the new Polestar 4 model, I recommend choosing at least the plus package and the pilot package. With that said, let's take a look at the interior package. You can choose between black and mist color tones, and you can also choose the optional Napa Seat package. The Napa Seat package option adds two more speakers to each of the front seat headrests, resulting in a total upgrade of 16 speakers and 1400 watt of power. Interestingly, with this option, navigation announcement, phone calls, etc. can only be heard through the driver's headrest speakers. The feature that I personally consider the most useless in modern cars, massage function, is also included. Ventilation function is added as well. The difference is that the Volvo sucked in air, whereas the Polestar 4 blows it out. Which do you think is more effective? The shape of the rear seat headrest is slightly larger and more contoured to enhance comfort. I don't consider the choice of Napa seats to be essential to the extent that it's entirely subjective. Let's finish up with the other two packages, Pro and Performance. The Pro package upgrades the wheels to 21 inches and adds the gold striping to the seat belt. However, it's possible to switch to 21 inch sports wheels without selecting the package, with cost being £1,600 in the UK and $2,500 in Australia. But if you choose a package, it costs £800 in the UK and the same $2,500 in Australia. What happened? Of course, if you are going to select the performance package, you don't need to consider whether to choose the Pro package or the 21-inch wheel upgrade. However, I consider the performance package to be an over-specification, so I would not choose it. Therefore, I don't feel the need to upgrade to 21-inch wheel at this stage. Now for the last step, looking at the single options. Home charging cable is provided as a standard, magic sky loop, body color matching, and second low tinting. Let's choose only the magic loop option. Color matching is subjective, so it's up to individual preference. With these selections as the most common primary options, the price would be like this. Now let's look at the dual motor specification. Again, choosing plus and the pilot package. But one significant difference compared to the single motor is that the suspension change on the dual motor. It has a ZF CDC suspension with three levels of damping adjustment. The CDC e-damper you may recognize ZF as a German transmission company. It seems that this suspension system developed about 10 years ago is still quite usable. We can see that the vehicle was designed with easy adjustable suspension from the beginning. In the case of Polestar 2, just took over from Bobo without considering the performance suspension in the first place, must be lifted and disassembled some part to adjust the damper. Oh yeah! 
So up to this point, I think that's the first choice for dual spec. For those owners who desire the performance aspect of the dual model, there is the option to include performance package. This package upgrades the wheels to 22 inches and includes Brembo calipers. The ZF CDC suspension is also tuned for the 22 inch wheels and it gets yellow seat belt. The price becomes Now, let's use the price of the Polestar 2 in the UK and Australia as a benchmark to calculate how much more expensive the Polestar 4 is. Then we will compare it to the price of the Polestar 2 in the US to predict the price of the Polestar 4. Let's take a look at some additional information about the Polestar 4. There are three car modes. One of them is called the Keep Climate Mode, which can maintain the temperature of the parked vehicle for up to 8 hours. But the question arises, will there be a need this feature even drain the battery over 8 hours though? It says Animal Mode on the screen like that, and it keeps the internal air conditioner running. By showing this image on the screen, it helps to avoid the potential misunderstanding from those around. However, I don't think it's easy to understand the meaning of that screen. It would be nice to change it to a more common plain image. The third one is the car wash mode. It's a feature designed to be used just before entering an automated car wash. With a single touch, it closes all the windows, folds the side mirrors, deactivated the wipers, the charging port and tailgate. This seems like a very clever idea. It supports up to six driver profiles, including the driver's seat, side mirrors, steering wheel position and sensitivity, regenerative braking, and even the arrangement of your favorite applications. The feature of storing surrounding footage captured by cameras installed in the vehicles is also included as a standard feature. This feature seems similar to what Tesla offers. Especially with the forward-facing camera, footage is automatically saved when the vehicle's safety system intervenes. If it performs well, it could potentially fulfill the role of a dashcam. In the safety section, it's noted that the reason for one fewer airbag than expected was because the Polestar 4 only has inner side airbags on the driver's side. As a side note, the release of Polestar 3 was delayed due to rider optimization issues like the EX90, so it came out later than the LiDAR LED Polestar 4. However, unlike the EX90, the Polestar 3 is being released without rider initially, as the rider system is offered separately as a package. It is said that the rider free specification will be released first. On the other hand, the EX90 is the highest specification ultra single trim. RIDAR was announced as a standard. Lumina LIDAR system fitted directly to the roof line. All of these are standard in the EX90. So EX90 cannot be launched at the moment. The true Polestar brand started with the Polestar 3 and Polestar 4. Through these models, it's expected that the brand will establish itself properly in the electric vehicle market. Although my primary focus is Volvo, but I found myself leaning towards Polestar if I were to buy an electric vehicle in the future. But how do you see when there's no rear window? But what about the back seat? Uh -huh. 